Hi, my name is Kenneth Shine. I am a Lexington resident. I'm here to talk about my grandfather, Arthur Shine. He was from Newark, New Jersey, and he served in World War I. He was drafted when he was 21, and he went into the Army in September of 1917, and he was discharged in August of 1919. He was in the Third Army Corps, um, and his records say he was in headquarters troop, and I don't know exactly what that means. But he did have a victory medal and listing three battles, three battles that the American Army were in. So he certainly was in the combat, if not actually in combat, in the combat region. So my grandfather was in the infantry, but according to family lore, he was first in the cavalry. Don't know why the switch happened, but obviously there was much more infantry than cavalry in that war. He was wounded. He didn't receive a Purple Heart, but he had scars in his leg that we could see as children that we assume was from shrapnel. But he was in several battles in France, including the Ancis Marne and the Battle of the Argonne. In many ways, he was a stereotypical guy. Um, he was a big, happy Irishman who later became a cop, a policeman. He was a detective on the Newark, New Jersey police force. And he was very outgoing, had lots of stories, had lots of friends. But perhaps, like many veterans, he never talked to me about stories about the war. Now, I was 17 when he died, and he was about 85. So I did have opportunity, and I regret that I didn't get a chance to talk to him more about it. The only time he ever told me a story was something that happened not in combat, but in fact after the armistice. And he talked about how him and his fellow friends were playing an impromptu game of soccer or football with German helmets. In some sense, that was, was typical of him. Then instead of having a, a horrible war story, he had this very playful, silly one. I can remember him grinning at me with a cigar in his mouth as he told me this story. But I regret that I didn't get a chance to talk to him about the more serious things that he encountered. Um, I don't have any, I have very little records of him. Unfortunately, the <clears throat> records in the National Archives were destroyed in a fire in 1973. And so far, I've only found one bit of correspondence. It was a postcard he wrote to my grandmother. He was not married at the time, but I guess they were planning to get married. And that was from after he came back. And he wasn't discharged, and he was in Hoboken, New Jersey. So he was the guy from Newark. And the only letter I have from him is not from France, but from about four miles away in Hoboken. After the war, he was a patrolman and a detective on the North New Jersey police squad for many years. He worked primarily on organized crime cases, but for a while he was even assigned to help on the Lindbergh baby kidnapping case. But he was a very happy guy, and he did not complain about his service, and I was very happy to know him.